All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Side by Side. And as you see here in front of me, I'm going to take a look at a couple of Masters of the Universe, Masterverse figures that have been released in the last couple of months. And I've had these for a little while, but I haven't been able to get to them. But I am going to do it now. And we're just going to look at them side by side to, let's say, another iteration of them. In this case, I have Origins and maybe a couple of others that I may have access to. So, as you see, we're going to start off over here on this side with no other than Pighead from the Rulers of the Sun series, which is basically a new addition to the Masterverse universe and lore that was created by this young man's mother or little kid's mother back in the 80s because he wanted a he-man that was of color that was more representative to his own color so that he could be I guess more comfortable and many years later they actually took the time and Mattel reached out and actually did these figures to connect them with the actual He-Man universe. And I thought it was a really nice gesture. And out of it, we've gotten some incredible figures thus far in Sun Man. And now here with Pighead. And Pighead is in his box. You see, Rulers of the Sun is Sun Man, Pighead. And then again in the same classic style aesthetic box as we all grown to know and be familiar with to this point and you see here that it does have artwork that was also created for masters of the universe in the same tradition and style and i don't know who exactly did the artwork but i know that they did an incredible incredible job he looks fantastic it looks fantastic and you see that it says wicked enemy of sun man rulers of the sun punished prince zegar of house shadis for his cruelty banished him to the shadows and transformed him into pighead half man half pig now he has one goal steal the enemies from the first sun so that he might harness its power and the rule and rule the galaxy so you know there is part of the synapses and again you see that it is part of the many faces and the sorcerer's wave which came out a little, a little while back but Again, better late than never. I just want to take a closer look and give you my thoughts and opinions on the figures. And second now, we have here none other than Prince Adam. And this is the Masters of the Universe Revelations Prince Adam from the anime series from the Howard House uh, Animation Studios that did the Castlevania for Netflix. And you see Prince Adam in his pocket. He comes with a smiley face in the corner. That it identifies that it's a Netflix origin series figure and version. And he looks really, really nice. Really, really awesome. That face sculpt is exactly like the animation, which just makes me want to have another iteration of He-Man's face being sculpted to look more like the Revelations. You see Prince Adam on the side and the artwork right over here looking as fantabulous as you see. Once again, looking fantastic. And in the back, really, really nice. Looks like a screenshot almost of the actual animation on Netflix. And this is part of the Clam Champ. Skeletor, which is Horde Skeletor, and Webstor Wave. So, we'll take a closer look at Adam because he's certainly not last, right? So, 
That is the second character we'll be looking at today on Side by Side. And then obviously, last but certainly not least, over here, we have none other than the brand new New Eternia version of Buzz Off. And Buzz Off never ever looked so good. The actual 2010 iteration and design <clears throat> for Buzz Off was more lankier <clears throat> and not as muscular and look more insect. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the figures for those 2000 next series were only five points of articulation. Would I love to see another version of that being represented with the Masters of the Universe Masterverse style of this Masterverse series? Absolutely, I think he will look phenomenal. But this version here carries a lot from the original and the artwork that was designed in concept back then in the early 80s when they were trying to create this new line. <clears throat> and as you can see here, he looks fantastic. This design is absolutely stunning. So we have here Buzz Off on the side again. And you turn to the spine on the side, and you see the artwork looks fantastic. Really, really nice. Then we turn it to the back, and another incredible, incredible art design. I don't know if this was Ayman O'Donoghue or who exactly, but whoever it is did this one. Big shout outs to you. And you see that it says, original design inspired by classic concepts. So really cool. And it says, after the catalysm destroyed the great queen nest, Eternia's B people known as the Andronites, right? Or Andronine? Andronines? Nearly collapsed as a society. They were saved by the warrior lord Buzzoff, who reclaimed order and set off to establish a new home for his people as their king. So, he is part of this wave with the classic merman from Revelations, Grizzlor from New Eternia, Faker from New Eternia, and Buzzoff from New Eternia. So this is one of the latest waves alongside the Clam Champ one that you see with Prince Adam. So he's fairly new as well, uh, but not easy to find because he's not one that has been on the toy shelves or pegs very readily or readily available because, you know, I've been, like I said, every time you check the characters, even Pighead himself, <clears throat> were not around. Pighead was actually um, started to show up in targets. And then when you see him, it's very few and far between. Um, I did run into one of my Walmarts long ago and actually saw a pig head there which had me mind blown but also at the same time really happy to see that they're able to bring more characters that are more unique into different outlets like you know a Best Buys or a Walmart or a Target which is fantastic because it just helps the line get more representation in different stores and get more awareness with consumers and even kids. So, there you have it, guys. These are the three characters we're going to take a look at today on Side by Side. Sit back, relax, enjoy a digital drink. And hopefully, you'll join me for the ride and for the review and my thoughts on the new three or the three Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, New Eternia, Revelations, and Rulers of the Sun, Sun Man action figures from the latest waves of 2023 i'll see you in a blink of an eye and here we go guys here is our first look at prince adam from the revelations anime netflix he-man tv series and we'll bring him right in front of the camera 
and you're going to see immediately how wonderful that face sculpt is with a really nice soft look to him and design nice clean paint even on the hair and if you notice the hair doesn't have like a lot of detail it's like more simplified and softer look because that's representative of the animation and style then we have his vest looking like a nice burgundy with some kind of brownish outline here right on the collar on the sleeves going down and then we have his belt looking leathery with the gold with some gold little tips going around it then we and you see his sleeves and his shoulders it's like a nice white with a nice wash on it looking really nice with the little rounded look at the ends which are also you know very nicely executed now here is the spandex crotch area where he has the, the nice purpley or light purple you know pants and then the boots with the light brown on the top a darker brown going in the bottom with the straps of you know that looks like to be you know a bandana or some type of leather straps that they put for reinforcement on the boots because again we're still in a barbarian time so there it is there is Prince Adam and here is the back and so far what I can say is I feel like there was two steps or two things Mattel could have done here uh, to make this figure even more superior than what it already is uh, especially for the price point that you're getting him and to give him more value and you know changeability perhaps or collectability and that would be that they should have gave him a second harness or a second vest in the old school style flocking <clears throat> so that you can remove this one and put that one if you choose to and have this belt be a separate piece so that you can do those types of sim you know simplistic changes and have the nostalgia from the original vintage one and then also in the back it has no holster or a sheath holster for the actual sword to hold it in place in his back uh, which would have been cool because I believe even Prince Adam had it for classics but and the one from 2000 and X was very similar to this one in the sense that it's um, you know very lanky and very skinny so the first accessory that he brings is an extra portrait and you see he's smiling and laughing got really nice details on it and weathering to make it look like he's laughing with like tears in his eyes and nice pearly white is orange or like a little orangey with uh, you know with maybe a, a hint of pink I'm not sure but that's one of the accessories then he brings two sets of hands uh, one being two fisticuffs as you see here see for him to punch with his hands on hand to hand combat right so moving right along and you can see he also has two open hands to hold the weapons of the sword or pistol or laser or whatever it is you can use and give him. Then moving right along as well, uh, we have the version of the power sword crystallized that looks like it has little stars and galaxy on it with which is done really nice with the technology of putting um, those those types of glitter 
in plastic, which obviously, you know, the technology is now available and there. <clears throat> but this sword, they should have a bluer version that would have came with a hero because he wields that sword as well. Uh, before, I believe, um, you know, uh, he-Man in our world, as we know him, does. And then he brings a version of the Power Sword, the regular, but looks really nice in that gun metal, gun metal uh, sheen and purple, I mean, and, and silver gray. But you see that it looks like it's a little sheen to it. And then the handles are like these uh, gray, uh, brownish straps. Uh, with the end of the tip of the hill and the, oh, and the way handle and it looks really representative of what it looks like which is longer but very true to the vintage from the actual cartoon because that's what they look like so real quick as far as his articulation for this style of body is it does move left and right it moves up and down as you see then you have the Shoulders go up about that much. Down, he has bicep swivel, which moves really nice. A single on the elbow that doesn't go up too much, but at least it's pinless. Then a swivel in the hand with obviously an in and out hinge. Then here he has like a torso cut underneath, as you can see, which allows you to move him, but it's a little restricted because of the actual uh, vest over him. And then he moves in the actual, you know, waist. He can punch over that much. And then hyperextend back just that much, like so. And then, uh, as far as the hand, there's no butterflies on the arms. Then here we have the new drop down legs and you can have a swivel on his thigh, a double double on the knee, as you see, seamless with no pins. Then obviously you have the boots rotation right at the very top and everything's hidden really now nice as far as the articulation I want to note that then this the shoe goes back of the boot that much and forward just a little bit but you know is due to the nature of the style of the boots and then I got the rocker so as far as articulation for Adam or Prince Adam if you will it's very well done very very well so he looks really awesome and a good representation of the animation itself. So now let's take a quick pause and bring in the actual origin version to do a side by side in difference and so we can see and take a look. Okay guys and here we have Prince Adam side by side with the origins Prince Adam. Now unfortunately I do have a certain amount of Prince Adams, but I can't show them because I have them put away. I have a Lego one. I have a uh, Loyal Subjects Prince Adam, and I have the 2000X Prince Adam from the 2000X animation from, and I have the classics, but they're all put away. So the only one I had to my disposal was the Origins because I just got him recently with the jet sled that he came with in that two pack but you can see the same influences and yet at the same time differences so we have here revelations and then origins side by side and as you can see that very different what i love about revelations is that it does make him look like a teenager and it makes it more believable that he is turning into a man of muscle and power named E-Man. With Origins, as you can see, he looks very old already. 
He looks like He-Man trying to dress in tight, tight fifth grade clothes uh, and pass off as a teenager. You understand? A teenager looking this buff would freak me out because he looks uh, kind of um, inhuman, if you ask me. So that element of He-Man I always thought was kind of weird and really kind of too silly, even for children. Because, And I know people are like, oh, blasphemy, how dare you, he bot Listen, like I said, my affinity and my love for He-Man came from the toys. The comic and the artwork by Rudy Obrero that was done in the toy vintage boxes. That is how I always seen He-Man in my mind, even in an adaptation for a film or anything like animation. That is why I love Revelation so much, because it at least made it feel like something adult and he, that evolved from what it began as it was something for children. You see, again, Adam here with his sword. I put the one sword there, and he's alofting the other sword that's translucent, which is supposed to be when he's turning in to He-Man. So I think they look really cool together, side by side, just because it kind of shows the evolution of time for not only the toy lines, not only the art direction, but for, you know, the actual uh, toys itself, right? And and it just shows that, you know, you can do a lot of cool things artistically and change them, but yet stay really true and really uh, respect the essence and elements of the original source. So there it is, there is the side-by-side -side for Prince Adam. Now, let's move on to our next character, Buzzle. Oh yeah, real quick, here you go, here's Prince Adam with his extra portrait, laughing, smiling, being silly as Prince Adam can actually be known to be, especially when he's around Orko and Gringer, so that's very cool that they gave you that option. Kind of like the memed uh, Prince Adam that they made in the classic slime. So, really fast, just wanted to show you guys that. Ah, yeah, there we go. Ahí está, señoras y señores. Here is none other than Buzz Off from the new Eternia conceptual art. And now, as you can see in all of his glory, Buzz Off looks absolutely fantabulous. He looks amazing. He looks fantastic. Love the head portrait, first and foremost. I think it stands out and looks really, really great. The details in the top of the head. Looks very arachnic, very bee-like, and centric with the beautiful, very, very vibrant teal blue. The nose almost has like a flatness to it with the little whiskers here in the bottom or a uh, chin little, you know, pointy things. Like a real, like a real, uh, you know, insect would look like. And then you see the attention to detail on the chest. All molded in, looks really nice. Sculpted on top of this traditional standard E-Man buck, which gives it a really nice t look and feel of a premium quality with the nice shiny yellows. And you see on the shoulders of the top, next to the neck, all the details in scaling, going all the way out through the shoulders, bringing down through his biceps, his forearms with those spikes, has even that type of freckly look effect that is from the like skin. There goes the wrist guard, and then his pincers. You see all the details on his pincers. And then you go here to this side, you see his belt is a nice gold with a kind of darker translucent look to it. Not as light, but thicker, but it is translucent. Probably won't come on the camera. And you see his uh, plates here on the side for protection by his crotch area with his loincloth in that darker brown, kind of blackish, but more brown you can see it more brown in person then obviously his thighs has the spikes coming out with the details and the legs going all the way down to the shin 
and the back part of the leg with his arachnid style boots with nice weathering and coloring and brown and blacks going down to house his insect like feet right as you can see and the bottom even has some detail with the peg holes. and then when you turn them around you see the wingspan and setting they're nice yellow translucent with a bunch of little mechanical little things on them and you see it on this side as well on the two other sides and it just makes them look absolutely absolutely stunning so let's put them down just for a brief second Woo. and here we go here is his first accessory which is his over the top helmet that he wears on top of his already existing eyes and pupil nice and yellow translucent with all that level of detail even on the inside with the actual antenna and I think this is more of a mechanical helmet to help him see things with a more digital type of scope and technology because his eyes probably just see like a normal way of an insect looking but this helps him to be technically more advanced and seeing things from a distance with numbers and statistics probably to help him feel and look more futuristic. And then he brings an actual harness, to be honest. This is not common with Buzz Off, but because he always had that plain chest look, I think it's a nice welcome addition in that nice gold, actual plasticky gold look too. Not exactly translucent, but it has a nice plastic look to it. And then it has that big ruby in the middle and see-through. It looks really, really good. And then last but not least for his accessories, he also brings his traditional vintage style weapon, which is the axe. And this is a nice dark navy blue, to be honest, to be honest with you. You might not see it in the video, but trust me, I'm telling you, it's like a navy blue. With a little sheen and metallic and then that little uh, grip on the side to help him hold, hold it on his hands. Which is a nice little new touch that did for this version of Buzz Off. So, as far as articulation, really fast. He does move his head left and right. Very easy. He looks up about that much he looks down about that much and then he has just a little bit of mountain tilt but good enough for a figure like him obviously he has the full rotation on his shoulders you have to move down the wings so they'll get in the way full 180 degrees the shoulders go up that much there is no butterfly in this shoulder the bicep swivel and then he does have double double on the elbow with seamless pin list joints and then he has a wrist swivel and then for the first time I believe in this figure line with these characters the pincers his hand pincers actually have articulation and you can see it right in there which is an awesome touch because we never really had that with another version of Buzz Off or Clawful as an example for that matter. So it's really nice that they added that. Then on the way, on the torso here, he does have a cut and is well hidden because of the scope. But as you can see, it has rotation. It can make him lean left to right really well. It goes forward that much. It hyper extends back that much. Then we have the actual wave swivel. And with the wave swivel, you can still kind of bring a little bit more down to the front forward, as you can see, and a little bit back more with the hyper extension like that. Then, of course, he has the thigh and then the double on the knee with seamless points as well. He has a boot cut, then his feet goes back this much, forward this much, with a 
forward pin rocker in the front of the scene. And of course, he does the Van Dam split. Now, I believe, let me see, I believe, no, he doesn't have the drop down joints the way that uh, Clam Champ did. I don't know why that is exactly, but some of the new ones do have it and some of the new ones don't have it. Um, it could be because they were part of the sculpting design way earlier in the line, but didn't get a release point until now. And that's the only real logical explanation that I can think of. And as far as the wings go, in this case, the wings can span out like this and out, and then they can come down like so on both sides, like so, like this. You can have it looking like this, or because it's split into four, that's why it looks different. Or you can span it up like so, right? Like this. Then bring these down, and while you have those down, bring those back. And it gives you that nice dynamic, you know, wingspan effect for a character like him. Obviously, that is supposed to be a B man. So now let's take a quick pause and put his accessories on and make a look at him side by side with one of his other existing figures. And here we go, guys. Here it is. Here is Buzz Off next to Buzz Off side by side. And as you can see, in all of his glory and his accessories, he looks pretty, pretty fantastic and phenomenal. He looks really badass in my personal but humble and true opinion. I can't lie. He looks better than any Buzz Off figure that we've ever had in the past. And the truth is, even the 2000X design, which looked really cool and modern, didn't look this cool because he was very lanky and very arachnid. Like, it wasn't, uh, didn't feel as much as a hybrid of a man and a bee the way that this one does, and yet still manages to obtain or, you know, retain you know, or continue to obtain the, the kind of muscular look to him because he is in a barbarian world. So he is a barbarian B-man, and he looks great. But let's take a quick look at Origins, because he's the only one I have at my disposal. Again, I do have uh, the mini, you know, uh, what they call it, the uh, mini masters from, uh, from Mattel. I do have the I believe it's a formation one they did. And I have the 2000X and the classics. But not at my disposal. But this is the vintage look almost 95% or 99%, almost 98%. If there's any changes in subtleties, it's basically on how his little um, mechanical helmet fits or. The axe itself, you can actually hold it with no problem. Uh, in the original vintage toy, it was almost impossible for him to hold, hold the axe. And as you know, these are things you can use with like swappable parts. So you see the translucent wings there, but they're much bigger and they're connected together as opposed to being separate. And then, you know, of course, it has the articulation as well. So. What we can do, since he didn't bring an extra portrait, what we can do is let's swap out heads and see what that head looks on him really, really fast. And here we have it. Here's the head swap on the Origins. And it's kind of, you, I think it, it would work. But the only thing that's silly is that you see the body looks like he's trapped as a, an older buzz off, trapped in like a little five or six or seven year old body even though it is muscular. So it kind of looks weird aesthetically, but it still can work, to be honest. Uh, if that's something that you appreciate and like, or even to do customizable things like extra henchmen or, or bodyguards, but you know, for, while you're playing whatever things you're playing, uh, 
and doing with your other figures, you can do stuff like that, you know, um, and maybe create your own army with the possibility and the interchangeability, right? And then buzz off here with the vintage origins head. Uh, it looks too goofy because the body looks too detailed and higher end and get the face sculpt with the goofy helmet uh, of the vintage style looks uh, kind of silly makes them look silly don't make them look right it's not correct but either way that, that was mainly for shits and giggles so there you have it that's what it looks like um now let's move on to the last figure which would be uh Pighead. all right guys and here we are here we have the last figure in the set and that is pig head from the rulers of the sun faction that was included recently just about a year ago to the masters of the universe lore and worlds now again as you can see very similar very similar to each other as interpretations but look at how beautiful and how nice he looks in the masterverse version this is what i love about being able to include new things and unique characters because even though pighead didn't actually birth in the universe of masters of the universe because of his uniqueness his colors and differences and look he actually feels like he's always been part of the masters of the universe collection because he is of course a man that's a pig and we'll take a closer look at him and the colors alone are just so vibrant and so you know, um, homo-ish, if you want to say that, right? Because they're very, very bright. They're colors that only really young girls would probably like, or girls in general, teenagers and stuff like that. But you see the hot pinks, the dark uh, uh, navy blue with that metallic sheen, the very bright, 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 neon bright, neon green. And there's his portrait made his eyes look really mean with his horns coming out and tusk on both sides of his mouth his actual pig nose the crown on the top that looks very very similar and reminiscent to the bad guy from Conan the Barbarian that plays that's B that that's was played by uh, Tom's Earl Jones uh, you see the, all the details in the helmet scuff marks like from battle torn and battle wear like he was in big battles and then you see the two uh, uh shoulder pieces that connect to his biceps and the, with the you know spikes and the same type of inscription and detail on both sides then his chest plate looks like as you know he has a steel plate over even though it's the actual regular uh, buck harness, the only thing you see this year, they uh, they uh... okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. The uh, flashlight wasn't working because my phone was on lower charge. But here we are. Like I said, the colors on his plate, uh, even though it's the same body, it has a little bit of detail there. To make it look like it's an armor on top of his actual body and it works well it's very effective you see scuff marks on it like it's battle torn and you see these details around around and, and in his neckline area then you see this nice leathery strap that comes off it is removable in that kind of caca brown color with the gray spikes you see the attachment latch there going all the way across looking really awesome then he has some real vibrant pink wrist guards with spikes on it as well as you can see in that nice hot pink then he has gloves i think it's supposed to be an attachment where this is hot pink and then it turns into the glove you see that his hands are with that mm, that not maroon or navy blue with the metallic sheen on both sides then for his crotch 
loincloth area. He has the black belt, like traditional classic style, with the big circles and the small ones in like a pearlescent dark orange is the best way I can explain it. Then he has a nice amount of weathering with these nice colors there on the feathered like loincloth it gives it a nice deep amount of detail and it looks like it's like a like a yellow wash maybe on top that makes it stand out really well and it's really sculpted really well then of course going down just the regular legs and then the same color of his skin which is neon green and then the boots classic he-man boots with the top loincloth area being per, uh, hot pink like hot pink you know uh fur for an, for an animal maybe an exotic animal from Eternia and then the boots being that same navy blue with the metallic sheen so overall and all, and all in all he looks absolutely fantastic as far as uh, his aesthetics go he looks great so now what we'll do is we'll take a look at his accessories and move the origins Big head to the side just for a brief moment. So, as you can see, first thing he brings is his translucent mace with the ball on the end, or ball mace, I think, with the actual spikes, all in translucent colors, which looks really nice and fits well. Then we have his humongous, really large, uh, shield down for Origins from based from Masterverse versus Origins. Really nice with the metallic blues in the middle with the spike and the hot pinks outside and the nice details there and the sprinkly, sparkly look with scuff marks of battle and war tone. And then the inside is just the regular, uh, you know, straps in the hot pink color. He also brings an extra set of hands, which is basically uh, a fist to cuff for one side, which is a fist, and then another open hand to hold weapons on the other side, and an open hand to hold the shield. And then he brings, last but not least, this beautiful serpent-like uh, dragon thing, or that looks almost like a dragon creature uh, in translucent blue. It's really light blue, translucent. And this is like an image that comes out of him or like an entity within him. Uh, what it looks like based on the illustration of the artwork. Uh, but it's probably like a power he has. And you see all the spikes around it. Looks almost like an ancient dragon of sorts. Which looks really, really cool. Uh, and it's just a nice little touch to make it more new Eternia, if you will. So... Let's take a look real quick to finish off his articulation. It moves left, moves right, down this much, up that much. He has the shoulders all the way to there. It can move 180 degrees without no intr intrusion based on the pauldron or the shoulder pauldron the way it is. It does have bicep swivel. It does have the double on the elbow. Like we saw earlier, pinless and seamless. Then it has the swivel on the waist, and then obviously hinges to hinge in the direction that the peg is hinged. And in the middle, he does have a torso cut again with a nice amount of movement. You can move it left and right. The strap that goes around his neck does not, or his chest does not, interfere. He can move forward this much. He can hyper extend back with that same torso cut that much. And then of course he has waist, part for the course. And then we want to hyper extend them all the way back. With the waist, it's that much. With the waist forward is that much. Then you got the thigh swivel. You got the double on the knee. Also pinless. And then you got, obviously, the boot cut, back that much, forward that much, and then the forward 
and rocker on both of the feet. Then last but not least, he does a very substantial Van Damme split because he has the, let me see. No, he doesn't have the drop down pins either on this one. But you can definitely kick up a nice amount like that. And then you can kick back that much. So now what I'll do is we'll take a quick pause and we'll check it out and show what he looks like with Big Head alongside the origin. So sit back, I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are. So now we have them both side by side. Origins Big Head and the Masterverse Big Head. And you see all the similarities up close and personal. But at the same time, you also see all the indifferences. Now, Origins Big Head is based off the original actual design. So it's more simplistic, I guess, but it has a lot of nice color face you see that the helmet is same design but if you look at the helmet on the top it's plain it doesn't have any details same like the middle section because it just used a regular body buck you see the strap is from the same you know idea it's nice big shield with the cuffs also in the same color and you see that the crotch area is supposed to be like a burgundy color as opposed to black the way they did in Masters with the yellowish trunks. Now, the boots are even the same design and color as well. The boots are the same design and color as well as you see here. So, when so, when look so, what I was trying to say is you see they're very similar. Now, where they do have difference, obviously, is Masterverse is highly, highly more detailed. As you can see him here with his accessories and all of his glory. And also in the color shade of the skin. The Masterverse pig head is a little bit more greenish neon as opposed to the one for the Origins. It's more of a yellowy neon. It's not that different or that much, but it is noticeable when you have a side by side, as you can see here. You see? So, there you go. There it is. So, guys, there you have it. There is my side by side of these three Masterverse recent release from 2023 so let's get to the end of the review and my final thoughts okay guys and to the final thoughts of this side-by-side -side outlook and view of these masters of the universe figures from two different series and and from even different factions uh we have pig head Prince Adam and Buzz Off. And again, like I said, these figures look fantastic right next to each other. But for me, personally, for my taste, all these years later for being much older now, I personally prefer the more adult-like style, look, and aesthetic of the Masterverse. I think they look absolutely stunning the quality of them is second to none very top notch have gotten better and better as time has gone by since the very first wave release and to be honest from the price point and the value that they give you based on paint articulation seamless joints uh even the accessories they bring um, I think they're probably one of the best toy lines out right now in the market. And also rival things as good as the G.I. Joe Classified. I'm talking about in retail right now. Not other third-party stuff, but retail. 